If you're like me and want to fly your Air 2S at night legally and safely, but you're not quite sure of the best light or method for mounting, well stick around and I'll go over my struggle to find the true path of anti-collision enlightenment. Beginning in April of 2021, you're no longer required to have a waiver to fly your drone at night or during civil twilight as long as it's equipped with anti-collision lighting visible for at least three statue miles and it has a flash rate sufficient to avoid a collision. In my research, I found people saying the lights had to be white or mounted on the top of the aircraft, visible at this angle or in this position, but the only requirement I found was the three statute mile visibility and the flash rate. Now, not wanting to waste time or money on buying every type of light advertised for drones, I watched all the videos on YouTube about anti-collision lights, and the consensus is that the Firehouse Arc 5 has the best visibility, best quality of build, meets the FA requirements, it's reasonably priced, and it's made in the USA. What more could you ask for? So with the brand I wanted in mind, I headed to the Firehouse website to research and purchase a light. Well, with everything being difficult these days, I shouldn't have expected strobe shopping to be any different. I was thinking I could just mount the light on top with Velcro and all would be fine. Well, there was no mention on the site of mounting the ARC-5 on top or even a kit suggestion for the Air 2S. So my OCD kicked in and I questioned if this light would work with the Air 2S. All the featured lights on the site were specific to the Air 2, which is a slightly larger aircraft on the top deck and has two less sensors up there, so I was really concerned. If these lights worked on the Air 2S, surely they would advertise them as so, but nope, the only thing I saw was an ad for plastic mounts that you could mount the ARC-5 on the arms either in the front or back of the Air 2S. And this brought up the question, if I mount two lights on just the back, or just the front, would it cause me some balance problems? And if I mounted four lights, man, would it blind me? In an effort to gain some clarity, I decided to call the manufacturer for some answers. I got a hold of a gentleman named Scott, who is apparently the owner. He answered my questions, but good lord, he sounded totally miserable. You could hear it in his voice, and maybe I just caught him on a bad day. We all have them, but... Scott, if you happen to stumble across this, cheer up, man. It's not so bad. Anyway, I was told the ARC-5 will work on the Air 2S and that a top mount might be a little tight and interfere with the sensor. So based on this, I decided to try the arm mounts and was told there would be no balance issue as the strobe and mounts were so light that they didn't cause any problem. So I went back to the website and placed an order. I decided to use two lights with the rear arm mounts. I figured they would be less apt to interfere with the camera as they'd be facing in opposite directions. So I ponied up an extra eight bucks for priority mail shipping and figured I could start experimenting with them in three or four days. No such luck. Happy-go-lucky Scott didn't bother to throw the lights in an envelope and drop them off at the post office for five days. And then, in his excitement to be alive, he failed to send it priority mail. So my first class package sat in a distribution center a couple extra days. To Scott's credit, he did issue me a refund for the overcharge when I asked. Okay, the lights and mounts finally arrived and you can see what I got here. Alright, so here we are with what we received from Firehouse Technologies. We bought two of the ARC-5 uh, strobe anti-collision lights. And we also ordered uh, a set of mounting brackets. These two little mounting brackets that are designed to go on the rear arms of the uh, Air 2S. So we're going to check those out. Let's see what we get in a box here. I've already opened this up before, so I know what's in here, but I wanted you all to see what's in here. Come out of there. All right, so we got the, the light itself. We got a little firehouse instruction manual. We got a little short USB cord. And then in our with our light here, 
that's bright man that's not even that's not even the full strobe we got some velcro 3m velcro hook and loop and a piece of vhb tape all right so here's our light and our mounting bracket and i tell you I'm a little bit disappointed in these guys. You can see how loose they are. Now I guess we're going to have to mount some Velcro in here and then mount the light to that. I would have much rather seen a uh, mounting bracket that captures the light, you know, snapped in. And when I had these apart before, or opened up, to see uh, how it was going to work on the drone, I noticed that Putting them on the arms is rather difficult. Let's take a look at this. Get it spun around. Get some of this out of our way. Now, to mount this on the rear arm, you can see there's a, this bracket is offset. So this is the top and this is the bottom. And you have to put the bracket down on top of the arm like that and then securely hold the arm and twist it and I tell you I don't like putting that much force on it and then you slide it in a little bit and it locks it in place that's pretty secure I don't think that's coming off you can as you the arm is tapered so you can slide it this way farther to make sure that it's locking in place but we're gonna have to put some some velcro there to attach the light to the mount and I don't know if I like that particularly this is 3m velcro but I think I'm gonna go get some dual dual uh, 3m it's supposedly from what I've read online it, it connects a lot better a lot more secure but um, I don't I'm not crazy about those mounts because popping them off I'm just afraid we might break one of those. Like I said, I had looked at this earlier, and I'm afraid, I don't know, I'll try this. I'll try this out on these rear arms. I've got two lights, one for each arm. And I decided to use the rear because uh, I thought it would interfere with the camera less. We'll see how that works out as well. I have ordered from a company called Aerial Pixel a bracket that goes all over top of the battery and clips down over the battery buttons. And it's a uh, 3D printed mounting bracket as well, but uh, it appears to be a much less rigid than this piece. I just don't know how well that's gonna hold up. It's gonna crack, split on me, pop off. I do not want uh, these lights coming off in mid-flight. That is just, uh, I've had that happen before on a RC helicopter. I had a, a cowling on the front that came off, and man, it drops them out of the sky instantly. Uh, so we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to do some experimenting. Uh, I'll, I'll try these two brackets and lights on the rear, and I'll shoot some footage of that. And then when the, the top bracket comes in from Aerial Pixel, I'll uh, try that out with just one light mounted up here. You could, I guess you could put it up there. I don't think that would interfere with the with the sensors and we could uh, just put a piece of velcro there anyway we're going to do some experimentation here and see uh, what is the best mounting uh, position and see how the light looks when we got it in the air so we'll be back here we are the next day we've got the drone in the air and we've got the two arc fives mounted on the rear arms and you can see we captured a, a really pretty sunset, and that was the main reason I wanted the lights, was to get sunrises and sunsets. Here's another one. It wasn't quite as dark out. This was the following day. The sun is still on the, just barely on the horizon. And uh, we could see the drone really well from the ground, no problem at all. But the lights were really bright, stand out. Then uh, here's a takeoff from the ground without any strobes, just the navigational lights and the belly light. And I really like how the belly light lights up the, the landing area. And I wanted to show you this so we can compare it with this shot where we have the two strobes on the rear arms. 
And you can see just how bright those things are, man. They really light it up. I know the camera doesn't do the greatest job of showing the intensity, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, they're bright. And it's a, the uh, drone ascends. You don't have any problem uh, seeing the drone. You can see the orientation as well as you're panning and uh, uh, moving back and forth. If you turn around to face you, you lose the lights. To some extent, you can still see them a little bit, but you lose them for the most part. Here we are landing again. Now this is the the drone with just a top light mount, the aerial pixel top mount, one light, one arc fire, and it's not nearly as bright, of course. I like the two lights on the rear arms much better. And there's a problem with the top mounted light as well. Um, you'll as you watch here and you'll see the ascension and watch the light on top as we get up around the 20 foot mark it uh, starts becoming a problem right in here somewhere you'll notice the light disappears you can see a little bit of reflection on the arms there but from the ground i couldn't see anything and that's only 20 feet 21 feet i think is when the light disappeared so that's a problem i mean it'd be it would work if you wanted a quick, cheap solution to, you know, pop on a light, get it in the air. I'm sure it can be seen from the air. Uh, you know, from, you know, from a plane that was approaching could see it. But as far as a, an aid in helping you fly the drone from the ground, it's useless. Totally useless. So keep that in mind. I much prefer the two uh, rear arm mounted lights. A much better configuration in my opinion. So that's what I'm going to be flying with. Okay, after a few flights testing out both the top mount from Aerial Pixel and the rear arm mounts from Firehouse Technologies, here's my takeaway. Both rigs will get you in the air meeting the FAA's requirements for anti-collision lighting, but there are some differences. So let's take a look at comparisons of each system's features, likes, and dislikes. Alright, first off is the cost. The Aerial Pixel has an advantage here as you only need to purchase one light. I guess you could fly with just one of the Firehouse arm mounted lights, but I personally would be uncomfortable with the cattywampus balance you would impose on the airframe. I don't know for a fact that it'd be a problem, but I'm not wanting to try it out. I would suggest if budget is a high priority to just stick with the single top mounting option. Second, we have the ease of installation and removal. Now, both options will require you to remove the lights before you can close the arms and stow the drone completely. Originally, I was concerned on how hard it was to put the firehouse mounts on and take them off, but after a few times, they loosened up, and they're really no problem at this point, and they require the least amount of effort of the two options to put them on. Both mounts allow easy access to the on-off switch, so no problem there. The aerial pixel mount is easy enough to put on, but a little more effort to remove. I found unclipping the battery and then removing the mount is easier than trying to remove it while still on the drone. Next we have the looks. This easily goes to the aerial pixel as it's gray and pretty much matches the color of the drone. The black firehouse mounts are not a total distraction. So this feature is not enough to sway me towards the aerial pixel mount. Fourth is how secure they mount to the drone. Both options seem to mount securely. The mount would have to break for the light to become unattached. Although the arm mounts do depend on the Velcro for the light to stay attached to the mount, I feel very comfortable using the 3M dual lock Velcro, but would not be so much if using the Velcro that came with the light. The top mount encapsulates the light, so I don't see any way it would come off short of the mount breaking. Next is ground visibility, and this is a biggie to me. The Aerial Pixel top mount failed miserably in this area, and it's not the mount's fault, it's just the angle that the light broadcasts, and that once you get to altitude, the airframe blocks the light. With the firehouse mounts, you see the lights plainly at 150 feet, and while the, they don't provide orientation help much after this altitude, they are visible all the way to about 400 feet. The top mount becomes invisible from the ground at about 20 feet. 
visibility from the air, I don't know for sure, but as bright as they are, I think both would meet the FAA's three statute mile requirement. The firehouse might fall short with aircraft approaching from the front as the lights are blocked from this angle, but would be the direction I'm looking and I should be able to see any approaching aircraft and either rotate the light to face the aircraft or make other maneuvers to avoid any problems. Aircraft approaching from the rear would be from behind me and would certainly see the lights as well as any approaching from the sides. Of course, with the firehouse mounts having two of the ARC 5s, it's twice as bright, which makes this a clear winner in, the, in this category. The aerial pixel mount is a good choice for you if you want to save a little money and still be able to get in the air at night, but overall, my choice is definitely the firehouse rear mounts and what I'll be using for night flight. Now, on that note, I just want to mention that night flying is entirely different from flying in daylight. I'll warn you to use your off-center viewing, try not to stare directly at the strobes and scope out your mission beforehand in the daylight to check out for any obstacles like power lines or trees. I was surprised at just how much spatial orientation and depth perception I lost at night. I'm sure it wouldn't be as bad in an urban set setting where you had lots of ambient light, say like flying from a parking lot or such. And of course, while flying at dusk and dawn to capture sunrises and sunsets, which is what I'll be doing, and the firehouse strobes are perfect for that. Okay, that wraps it up for this video. I hope you found something interesting here. And if so, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It would really help me out in growing the channel and I'd really appreciate it.